Let's translate Acts 5, 29 through 32. Apocrithis de Petros, que e apostoli e pan. Pitharchin di Theo, malon e anthropis. O Theos ton pateron imon, e giren ye soon. On imis diechirstaste, cremasantes epi xilu. Tuton o Theos archigon ke sotira, ipsosenti dexia of tu. Tu dune metanian to Israel, ke afesin amartion, ke imis esmen martires ton rimaton tuton, ke to pnevma to agion, o edoken o theos tis pitharchusen of to. Answering and answering, Peter and the apostles said, It is necessary to obey God rather than man. God, our Father, raised Jesus, whom you killed, hanging upon a tree. This one, God, exalted leader and savior, to his right hand, in order to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these words and the Holy Spirit, whom God gave to the ones who obey him. Answering and answering Peter and the apostles, they said, it is necessary to obey God rather than men. God, our Father, so this is literally the Father of us, raised Jesus, whom you killed how by hanging upon a tree now the emphasis of the next sentence is on jesus this one i'm going to translate it in normal word order though god exalted him still still pointing to jesus ruler and savior prince and savior leader and savior to his right hand in order to give forgiveness to israel and forgiveness of sins I'm going to clean this one up a little bit. We're going to move this down here. We're going to move to Israel like that. Like that. And then... And we are witnesses. Of these things. and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, is being implied, which God gave to those who obey him. In answering, Peter and the apostles said, it is necessary to obey God rather than man. God, our Father, raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging upon a tree. God exalted him, leader and savior, 
to his right hand in order to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these words and the Holy Spirit whom God gave to those who obey him. Apokrithis means answering. It's a participle. So uh, it's really contemporaneous with Ipan. So answering. Who's answering? It's Peter and the apostles. They collectively said, it is necessary to obey God rather than man. Now, Pitharchin can take a date of direct object. Acts 5.29, obey God. Rather than putting this date of uh, b- below our infinitive here, I'm going to leave it there because it's going with Pitharko, Pitharkeo, Pitharkeo. And then we have rather than, so it's comparing God with man, or God with men, rather. And then it, it's really explaining God at this point. God, our Father, he raised Jesus. What Jesus? The one whom you killed. And then we have an adverbial participle here. By hanging upon a tree. O Theos, God exalted him. So the irony is you raised him up on a tree, but God raised him to be leader and savior. So there's some irony here. So God raised him up, exalted him as leader and savior to his right hand. To his right hand indicates where he put him, where he raised him to. Then we have an uh, infinitive phrase infinitive construction marking purpose so why did he raise why did he raise jesus because it was for the purpose of giving repentance to israel and giving forgiveness of sins and we are witnesses of these words in fact this should be like that and the holy spirit whom God gave to those who obey him. Now, why is two in brackets? It is marked off by brackets because the original hand of Sinaiticus, as well as the hand of Vaticanus, those two manuscripts from about the fourth century include the article two. But the overwhelming majority of manuscripts omit it. Papyri 74, the corrected hand of Sinaiticus, Alexandrinus, Bizet, Asiliensis, C 33, 1739, the majority text, and the early Latin tradition. So how is it that they put, the editors of the Greek text put it in brackets? Well, on the one hand, you've got Sinaiticus and Vaticanus originally including it, but the overwhelming majority omit it. So then what do you do with that? Well. So it's a split decision. The editors included it on merit of the original hand of Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, but they bracketed it to account for the fact that the rest of the manuscripts do not include it. And they're torn because there's there's no real way to account for its presence here. If the article is not required, and it's not because it's it's in an infinitive construction, the infinitive in and of itself expresses purpose. It does not need the article to do so. The articular infinitive without a preposition, which is what we have here, also expresses purpose. Either way, purpose is clearly the intent. Now, if purpose is the intent and you don't need the article, 
why is it there? The, the way textual criticism works is it's not about majority rules. It's about which variant can explain the existence of the others. If you can narrow a variant down to be able to explain the existence of the others, then that's your most likely reading. The problem is here, you cannot narrow it down and explain it. It can go both ways. So for example, since we don't have to have the article, it can be there or it doesn't have to be. It's the same meaning either way. Why did a corrector of Sinaiticus come along and remove it? Now, it seems there is no reason why it should have been added in. So it appears that its inclusion is original. And then what happened is it fell out amongst the vast majority through the transmission of the text, probably because it's just not necessary to have it. You don't need it. Scribes could simply skip it. It could go the other way. Maybe two manuscripts, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, dropped it by accident while the rest had it right. Because there's no way to narrow this one down, that's why it's in brackets. It's just to let you know from a critical perspective that this one may or may not be original. But the point I'm making is it doesn't matter because the infinitive in and of itself expresses purpose and you don't have to have the articular infinitive in order to express that. So no matter how you slice it, whether you include two or not, it's still expressing purpose. So let's look at our vocabulary. Apokrinome, this is to answer, reply. De, post-positive conjunction here. It can mean and, now, then, so, at the same time. It could be contrasting, but on the other hand. And then we've got Peter and the apostles. So apostles, apostolos, delegate envoy messenger, and then we have Lego. Lego is an irregular verb. So in the aorist, it has a different uh, tense stem. And it is epon. This is the third person plural aorist active indicative. So this means to say, speak, utter. Then we have pitharkeo. So this means to obey. Let's look at this one in LSJ. This is to obey one in authority. God is in authority. So we obey him, says Peter and the apostles. We obey God rather than men. Men can command us not to speak about Jesus. But you know what? We have to obey God who did command us to speak about Jesus. God, our Father... This is Patir. So this is your biological ancestor, your parent, one from whom you've descended, one who provides moral and intellectual upbringing, title of respect, revered deceased person, supreme deity, who's responsible for the origin and care of all that exists. Our father, Igiro, raised. So he raises this is to wake, rouse, wake up, awaken, raise, help to rise, get up, cause someone into existence, raise up, to cause to return to life, raise up. The ancients closely associated death with sleep. And this is Jesus. Now, Jesus is from Yeshua, which is a later form of Yehoshua, Joshua. So what's funny is Jesus is the successor of Moses. Who was the successor of Moses in the Old Testament? It was Joshua. No pun intended. For grins and giggles, let me show you in Hebrew, Yehoshua. Here it is. The first name in Old Testament containing Yahweh, apart from uh, Yochaveth, 
and you can see here it changes later to Yoshua and then later to Yeshua. It is Hellenistic for Jason, Yason. In the Septuagint, it's Yesus. This looks familiar. Also, Yosi Yos or Osi'i. And it means along the lines of Yahweh is help. You can see the root word, show, help. So, very fitting that Jesus' name is Jesus. Yahweh is help. He is God. He is Yahweh. He is I am. And he came to save. He came to help. He came to help us in our sins. Who is this Jesus? He's the one you diachirizo. Take hold of someone forcibly with malicious intent and frequently ending in the taking of life. Lay violent hands on. Murder. Kill. So this is the Jesus whom you murdered. Kremanimi. It's a me verb. Except that in the New Testament, it's not a me verb. Job 26.7 has kremazo instead fine no big deal so it means to cause to hang hang up on the tree hang on the tree i.e cross so here it's literally on the tree and uh, epi is marking what you're hanging upon so normally epi Marker of location or surface. Where, on, upon, near. Marker of presence or occurrence near an object. Marker of involvement in an official proceeding. Marker of movement to or contact with a goal. Cremanine, cremanine, epic silu, hang on a tree i.e. the cross. Marker of movement to or contact with. On, toward, in direction of. Xilu is xilon. So wood, object made of wood, club, cudgel, pole, cross. Wooden structure used for crucifixion. crucifixion. So it can be in reference to the cross. If you want to translate this literally, you would say on a tree. But if you want to translate it in reference to what it's pointing towards, that is a wooden structure used for crucifixion cross, you could translate it so. I'm just going to leave it as tree. Why? Because there's another word for cross. So that's not the word here, so I'm not going to use it. By hanging him on a tree. Why are we saying by? Right, let's look at participles in Wallace. Adjectival. There's no adjectival sense here, really. When we look at our construction, we have verb and then participle. Now, this participle is aorist active participle, masculine plural nominative. So, verb. And then our participle. So I'm going to guess it's verbal. Very unlikely to be substantival here, but it, it could be. But let's take a look and rule out the adjectival first. Just to be safe. Well, I guess it could be participle absolute. So we gotta go th we gotta go through and rule these out. So for adjectival proper. It would need to have another substantive. We don't have that. So it doesn't appear to be adjectival proper. Substantival though, it's an independent use of the adjectival participle. It's not related to a noun. It functions in the place of a substantive. As such, it can function in virtually any capacity that a noun can, such as object, direct object, indirect object, apposition, etc. It's used frequently in the New Testament. First, of course, if the participle has the article, it must be either adjectival 
or substantival. We don't have the article. Whereas the infinitive is abstract, speaking of the act or fact of doing, the participle is concrete, speaking of the person who or thing which does. This is articular, 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 articular. So all the examples he gives of the substantival are articular. And that's not what we have here. Now he does admit it doesn't have to be articular. So let's keep looking. Uh, we, we haven't really ruled out the substantival yet. Verbal participles. This category involves those participles that emphasize the verbal over the adjectival nuance. Verbal over adjectival. It includes independent and dependent. So if it's adverbial or circumstantial, it's grammatically subordinated to its controlling verb. Like an ordinary verb, the participle modifies the verb answering the question when, how, why. And that's what I've been saying. You killed him. How? By hanging him on a tree. Adverbial participles like adverbs are dependent on a verb. It has been suggested that this participle is simply an adjective used to modify a verb and hence may be appropriately called adverbial. The context plays a major role. It will usually be in the nominative case. That's what we have here. Similar to the infinitive. It's for this reason that the student is encouraged to translate the force of the participle with more than an ing gloss. Specific nuances. Temporal, that's when, that's not what we have here. Manner, by, this is very likely what we're dealing with, but this is participle of emotion or attitude. That's not the case. So it's not manner, means, by means of. This participle indicates the means by which the action of a finite verb is accomplished. This means may be physical or mental. Usage is common. First, as we pointed out above, both the participle of manner and the participle of means answer the question how. Thus, there is some confusion between the two. Second, one should supply by or by means of before the participle in translation. If this does not fit, it is not a participle of means. Third, there are some further guidelines. Participle of means answers how, but here it seems more necessary and implicit. If the participle of means is absent, the point of the main verb is removed as well. In some sense, the participle of means almost always defines the action of the main verb. I.e., it makes more explicit what the author intended to convey with the main verb. This is clearly the case. Fourth, the participle of means could be called an apexegetical participle in that it defines or explains the action of the controlling verb. This is clearly the case. And it follows the verb. That's what we have here always contemporaneous with the time of the main verb. Well, let's double check. Second plural, aorist. Aorist active participle. So the time matches. So we clearly are dealing with an adverbial participle and it's specifically a participle of means. Now let's also check the participle absolute because we are dealing with something of a nominative here. I double. I want to double check and make sure we're not missing anything. So the nominative absolute participle is in reality simply a substantival participle that fits the case description of nominativus pendens. Although it is called nominative absolute, it is not to be confused with the case category of nominative absolute. So this label, which has been the cause of much confusion, probably is derived from the fact that this participle has some affinity with the genitive absolute participle. Nominativus pendens, which is the pendant nominative, consists in the enunciation of the logical, not grammatical, subject at the beginning of the sentence, followed by a sentence in which that subject is taken up by a pronoun in the case required by the syntax. In other words, we're not following grammar. We're following logical subject. After 
the logical subject is stated, then the sentence is provided in which the subject that was stated is now referred to by a pronoun in the required grammatical case. It does require a substantival and the examples provided are articular. So it, it doesn't seem to be substantival. You who hung upon a tree. No, that doesn't make sense. So it really just seems to be adverbial and means. You killed him. You murdered him. How? By hanging him on a tree. Then we have utos. This one. God. Archigos. Archigos. So this is leader, ruler, prince. One who begins something that is first in a series. One who begins or originates. Well, in this usage, it's one who is in a preeminent position. Leader, ruler, or prince. I'm going to translate it prince. I like that. Reminds me of Prince of Peace. And Sotira. This is Sotir, Savior, Deliverer, Preserver. And it's used of Christ. Ipso'o. This is to lift up spatially, lift up, raise high. To cause enhancement in honor, fame, position, power, or fortune. To exalt. This is the figurative extension of the first gloss. It is used of two-tone. But that is pointing to Jesus. God appointed him, exalted him as leader. Notice the use of as here. Dexios, right. This is the right as opposed to the left in a frame or reference. With his right hand. So I translated it originally as to his right hand. But this is actually of God. So it's the right hand in imagery of power and use of God. This is a reference to 63.12 of Isaiah. So by his right hand, how did he raise him up? By, he raised him up by his right hand, with his right hand. Now, you can see here, it may also be dative of place, citing BDF section 199 at or to his right hand. So it can be either way. Knowing that Isaiah 63, 12 is kind of looming in the background, it might actually make a lot of sense to translate it by his right hand. But the data can be either one, by or at, with or to, either way. Since it's not saying anything about seating him down, Mm, maybe we won't say at or to. Instead, we'll stick with the Isaiah 63, 12 by with his right hand, answering how. He exalted him how? With the strength of his might, right? With his right hand. Off to to dune. So dune is didomi, meaning to give. Donate, grant, bestow, make, cause, produce, entrust, appoint, yield. There's a lot of different translations for didomi. In order to give metania, this is repentance. This is a change of mind. It's a turning about, a conversion. Oh, interesting. To give conversion to Israel. Mm. It is a turning away. This is the positive side of repentance. As the beginning of a new relationship with God. Ah. So, he's drawing Israel to himself in new relationship. This is a conversion, repentance, a turning about. In order to give conversion to Israel and Ephesus 
the act of freeing and liberating from something that confines, to release from captivity. This is the act of freeing from an obligation, guilt, or punishment, to pardon, to cancel. This is used of amartion, forgiveness of sins. This is cancellation of the guilt of sin. And we are martires. This is martis, witness. This is someone who testifies in legal matters or one who affirms or attests to testify, witness. This can be used of humans. It can also be used of witnesses who bear a divine message. Divine message? Is that what Rima is? Rima. So this is that which is said, a word, a saying, an expression, a statement of any kind. It can also be, um, in terms of Hebrew, an event that can be spoken about. Thing, object, matter, event. Right? We talk about uh, events with our words, and so you can say this is a word, but you're really talking about an event. So we are witnesses of these events. Also, the Holy Agion, Spirit, Pnevma. Note that Agion is Agios. It's the quality possessed by things and persons that could approach a divinity. It's dedicated to God, holy, sacred. Used as a pure substantive, the holy. That which is holy. This could be of the sanctuary, sacrificial meat. The Holy One of God, of Christ, the martyr, angels, and then Pnevma. This could be air, so blow, breathing, that which animates or gives life to the body. So this would be spirit. Uh, it could be personality, also spirit. And independent, non corporeal being in contrast to a being that can be perceived by the physical senses, so spiritual, and this is used of God personally. God's being as controlling influence with focus on association with humans. So this is spirit. It's what differentiates God from everything that is not God as the divine power that produces all divine existence as the divine element in which all divine life is carried on, as the bearer of every application of the divine will. The Spirit of God, or the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord. Because of its heavenly origin and nature, this Spirit is called the Holy Spirit. This can be with the article, which is what we have here. To Pnevma To Agion. Here it is, Acts 5.32. Which, or whom, God gave, so here's ditto me again, God gave, also Theos, God, transcendent being who exercises extraordinary control in human affairs or is responsible for bestowal of unusual benefits, deity, God, or goddess. And now we've come back to our uh, verb, pitharkeo. In this case, it is a substantival participle, tis pitharkusin, to the one's who obey him. And again, our date of direct object. And so to translate. In answering, Peter and the apostles said, It is necessary to obey God rather than men. God, our Father, raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging upon a, a cross, by hanging upon a tree. God exalted him as prince and savior by his right hand in order to give repentance, conversion to Israel, and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these events, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God gave to those who obey him. If you liked this video, hit the like button, brush up on your Greek and Hebrew, and we'll see you next time.